first I emailed Joe Ludwig. Joe Ludwig connected me to Patrick Hackett, and I said, "Hey, uh, you you are building something, but right now it seems like you make stuff in two D, but then you can watch it replay in VR. Uh, are you ever going to make make it so that you can actually create in VR?" And he said, "Yeah, of course, we're doing that right now." And so I was like, "Oh, okay, I guess it's been done. Uh, I don't need to do it myself." Um, and that was in May 2015. Um, and then I learned more about tilt brush and that, and that it's not solid creation. It's like ribbons in space and, and stuff. And, um, and that's, that's awesome, but there's, but there's room for more, you know, tilt, tilt brush is not like the one, the one creative app that suits all needs, you know, and neither is, neither is Sculptor VR. The, the main tool that, that I use the most is the sphere tool. It kind of gets the nicest surfaces because it it's a it's a nice analytical shape that um, and you can almost every tool has an alternate mode and in most tools the alternate mode is carved. Uh, the exception is with paint brushes. Um, the alternate this is you know there's solid paint. Oh, let me actually put some material here and then I can. So the the default is is hard making it com completely the other color but then the alternate mode is softer and so you're sort of airbrushing and you can slightly change the color um you can paint with a sphere or with a cone so there's there's the, a cone to sculpt with but then there's a cone paintbrush and the cone paintbrush is great for like popping in here and uh and doing doing something more fine you know I started off building at at massive scale, so I've filled up I've filled up the region. But um, but you know if I want to, I can go down here and and start building a house. This is the cube tool, um, but there's also a stretchable a stretchable box that doesn't show exactly what I'm doing, but it it pops out walls, um, and then. Inside this house, you know, I can I can carve away, I can carve away, and inside the house, there's still room for more detail. I can I can build up. Uh, this is going to be a table, I guess. Um, let's see. I think I'll do it like this. Um, and then on the table, yeah, of course, pop in. This is meant to be uh, a flower vase. I don't know. Uh, despite making an artistic app, I am not really an artist, so we'll see how this how this comes out. Okay, so you know, here is where I'm getting to the detail limits, but I think I can do it. Okay, so now this is a giant mountainous landscape, and you can zoom in to this poorly made house. <laughs> and in the house is a table. On the table is a vase with flowers. And on one of the flowers is a ladybug. Um, so that's the uh, that's the amount of that's the zoom. Now, if you pull out the hang glider, throw yourself around and grab onto walls. So it's similar, I don't know if you've played Climby, but it's it's similar to Climby, but there's not also walking, you know, there's no arm swing.
Uh, what, what's what's really fun? One of my favorite things to do is while one person is climbing around, I can build you an optical course. <laughs> yeah, so you'll have to jump to get there. Um, so you have to swing and release while your arm's still in motion. It, it doesn't Always, I mean, it takes a tiny bit of getting used to. Ah, there you go. Oh, I, I, I forgot to, I forgot to show rockets. Um, yeah, rockets are my my sort of assertion that that sculpting is fun, not just not just art, I guess. Um, and and the, the, the ability to carve into things and create craters in what you in what you make is the main the main advantage of a uh, of a voxel sculpting app over something like Hillcrush. Um so only the host can load things. I'm in the loading gallery right now. Uh, you don't see it; it's just local only. But I'm I'm browsing through. There's currently 145 pages. I expect it to shoot up pretty rapidly after quest launch. Um, yeah, I, this is way better than I can make. In a way, it's it's really cool to to see to to build something that other people are better at than me, the creator. Um, Yeah, on Quest, I was able to by building my own lighting system and stuff. I could, I got it to show about three hundred fifty thousand triangles on screen. Um, but it's very easy to build sculptures that are millions of triangles, so it starts eloding and hiding details. Um, but here's a here's a thing that I added. This is new on Quest. Um, if you turn your hand over, your left hand over, and go to settings. There's something called screenshot mode. Um, if you turn that on, it gives you a warning that you, you, it'll drop frames, um, and and then it'll it'll pop in much greater detail. This is this is a little bit, just a tiny bit bigger than the export limit. Um, if you if you carve away just like the the tree and leave the rest in, you can export this, and it'll be something like 10 million triangles or something like that. So so. If you want to export things to 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 3D print them or something, this is really close to the limit of exportable detail. Um, so now in this scene, if you turn on screenshot mode from 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 a quest on PC, I don't impose a limitation, but there's a risk that you crash your computer uh, because you run out of RAM. <laughs> um, so now if you pop into screenshot mode, you'll see you'll see tons more detail. Um, once it once it loads in, you know, like you can look at this at this cat's face, and it's and you can see the jaggedies of the mouth, and um, and you can see if you zoom in on the mouse, you can see his full face and stuff. You still can't see. You still can't see all of the details um, at once because you know this is this is something like twenty million triangles this scene, or maybe ten. I don't know. Um, and it can only show one million while in screenshot mode. So it's still doing this this L, this LODs. So you have to zoom in more to to see details. Um, this this one was was built in a very early beta version on the PC. Um, the, the amount of information that gets sent from actions, I'm, I'm, I'm sending the action information rather than sending the voxels themselves. Um, so, so it's running at 72 hertz. Uh, each action is only like, like um, 30 bytes maybe or something. So, so it's sending 
about a kilobyte a second as you're sculpting. When you're not sculpting, it's only sending your hand and head positions 10 times a second. So that's probably, I don't know, 500 bytes a second or something. And while sculpting, you're up to a total of 1.5 kilobytes per second. So, oh, I, I, I'm, I opened this one uh, to talk about that, that um, the underlying the underlying data here is voxels, um, and so you can you can sculpt in, in QB mode, uh, or you can sculpt in smooth mode, and and poly mode. So this was built in QB mode. So if I convert it to smooth, it will look like like garbage. It just doesn't it doesn't have the smooth information there because this is an ancient sculpture. But if you look if you look in here at this this stuff I just built. Um, this stuff is super smooth because uh, it's built in the modern Sculptor VR. Uh, it was QB while I built it. Um, and here's blended smooth, so you can't see the individual polyurns. Um, so, so now with modern Sculptor VR, things can be both smooth and QB, and you can switch back and forth. But very old sculptures like this one, this was built by my stepbrother, actually. Um, and there's there's a there is a Captain Picard up in this board cube. Um, <laughs> uh, this was built. This was built before. This is supposed to be Picard. Yeah. Um, this was built before Sculptor VR was even released on Steam. This was in like March 